while we're waiting I push my boulder up a hill And I'm debating whether I'd get further off by standing still So while you're waiting for acknowledgement from anyone Some needed more than you And didn't get enough when they were young While we're waiting I take my time, I take yours too For all the words I speak I never feel as though I'm getting through While we're waiting For a lesson about less is more I am guessing it's calamity The danger you adore And what for? One window closing Can still open doors I'm gonna sit right down And share myself with you Welcome to yet another Tuesday. How are you? I'm pretty exhausted. I wasn't kidding. Two hours. Whew, how did I make it through the day? Very, very busy. Lots to get to tonight. Hope you're doing well. Please let me know who you are, how you're doing in the commenter section below. You know I call it commenter because we make up our own words here at Dave J Tuesday. So make up your own words and put them in the com commenter section below. Why don't you? Okay, well, we're not going to delay. We're going to get right to it. We will check on your comments in, oh, a little ways down the road. But as I said, we've got much to get to, so let's not delay any further. Uh, a few weeks ago, if you were here, you know that it was my mom's birthday. And only a few short weeks later, guess what? It was my dad's birthday. That's right. And uh, as such, uh, we like to do something here at Dave J. Tuesday to, uh, you know, to look after the folks, so to speak. And... Uh, let me push this button here and go straight to Throwback Tuesday. Welcome, Sean. How are you, buddy? Let us know in the commenters. Hey, 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 you're doing your Fat Albert there, and I like that. I'm all about throwbacks. We're doing Throwback Tuesday, and hey, 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 Fat Albert is right up that alley. But today's Throwback Tuesday uh, throws back to uh, a birthday for my dad back when I was a kid. 
And as I did for my mom some weeks ago, I pulled out a card from the archives that I made for my dad. I happen to have that card right here. Which camera are we using? Camera, camera two, I believe. Is that right? Yes, right there. That's the camera. Oh, we've got a visitor, uh, Ray, in the studio today. In any case, no matter. Uh, my dad. Uh, let's go back to camera one. <laughs> See, I'm the, uh, I'm the associate director and the director and the cameraman and. Well, you've, you've got the idea. In any case, uh, my dad is a huge Giants fan, and, and uh, I want to apologize to my dad and all Giants fans for the Jets infecting the Giants as they seem to have. And I don't mean COVID. I just mean, uh, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Well, no matter, because my dad, he's a sporty guy, and that's why I came up with this, this little intro for the birthday card. Check it out. As I mentioned, we've got this birthday card. Let's check it out. It's a little more straightforward than the one from my mom a couple of uh, weeks ago that I showed you from when I was a kid. This is just my dad right there. Well, actually, here, I've got it for you here. That's uh, the, my dad in the center there back in the day. And look how I did the red over the blue and then the blue over the red. You see, I was getting very sporty myself, as you can see. And inside, when you open the card here, you will open it up and you see the, oh, look, there's a hole and there's the, there's the face and there's... there's that he deserves a spot on the staff. And as you can see, he's even got the clipboard. He's wearing the whistle. Yes, happy birthday, love, Dave. Yes, let's hear it for my dad, please. Let's hear it for him. Sean Hanshaw says, no audio on camera two. Oh, that's a problem. Thank you for letting me know. Oh, goodness gracious. We'll have to fix that uh, in post, I suppose. That's the problem or the excitement of live. That's right, live TV. That's right, live. All right, though we have something very happy to celebrate, and that's my dad turning 84 years young. Isn't that amazing? I'm so delighted. It's so wonderful to be able to still uh, connect all the time and all that great stuff. But uh, to turn to very quickly to some very sad news you uh, may have heard, uh, an icon of a generation today, Eddie Van Halen, the amazing, truly, truly one-of-a-kind guitarist from the band Van Halen passed away at a very young, 65 years old, and uh, and here's a picture of Eddie in his heyday with his uh, with his mad skills and all that stuff. And uh, I just want to take a moment to to play a a little something as a tribute in some small way. Now, I didn't have a chance to practice eruption, uh, so I'm going to play a tune that I wrote. It's called Diving Board, and I hope you enjoy it. We won't be needing that. Okay. I go dancing off the diving board, leave me to sing claw swim. I'm so singular, rising out of a horde. Believe me, I'm me. Question marks with mixed with exclamation. As a rule, I drown with the shooting sparks alone in the vein of my own destruction. Must admit, it's fun at first until the bubble bursts into an inflammation. And I'm dancing on the edge again. Sometimes I leave before I look to see what's there. Reminds me of what's in store, if not for the power of prayer. Cause you never think that you're the one, bad things will happen to you, fool. Whether or not you're the one who's invited it to your fool. Oh. 
diving board, leave me to sink or swim. I put faith in the universe, not a lord living life on a whim. Woman and the original hymn, give me strength out on my own limb. Rest in peace, Eddie. All right, now for the living, we're gonna get to some of the fun stuff. You're very welcome, Dad, and thank you, Sean, for wishing my dad a very happy birthday. I announced we would be doing some more stuff on the Saturday Night Live internship that I had, and so, uh, without further ado, I wanna tell you a little more about my first day on my internship. I may have mentioned some of this in my previous show, But on my very first day on my internship, uh, I met all the writers, I met some of the cast and a bunch of the production people. And the writers, although I was told not to speak with them, some of them were very engaging towards me, which was nice. Uh, one of such writer who became a good friend, and to this day is a dear friend, Mr. Tom Schiller. Do I have a picture of uh, Tom Schiller somewhere here? Well, I'll get to that in just a, a bit. Uh, hey, hey, Beetle Mike, welcome to the proceedings. I will get to your comments in just a bit, but I'm on a roll, you know. <laughs> and once I'm on a roll, it can't be stopped. So, without uh, further ado, Tom Schiller, I meet him and I introduce myself as the intern, and he says, oh, I I'm an intern at Roosevelt Hospital. But um bump yes. <laughs> do I have my but um bump Yes, I do. Okay, there it is. All right. So, uh... Tom and I uh, became friends because, as I'd mentioned on the previous show, uh, he allowed me to tag along with him and ask him all sorts of questions, and he brought me to the parties, and he, he ended up uh, just, just helping me out in so many ways uh, over the years. Uh, well, one of the other writers that I met that first day was a, a man you may have heard of. He goes by the name Conan O'Brien. Now, I have a few things to share with you about Conan. It seems my path crisscrossed with him just a little bit here and there as things went on. And uh, and so I, I wanted to come up with a little bumper for Conan. And I, I couldn't really think of a anything more than a silly play on words. So here it is. And uh, when I got there, uh, he was very nice, as were some of the other writers. Now, Conan shared an office. Check this out. If you can imagine this, in the back there, in the back wing of the writer's uh, area, he shared an office with uh, three other writers. Robert Smigel, who you may have heard of, became the uh, uh, head writer for, uh, for Conan's uh, late night show, and then uh, was also acting in some Sandler films, and uh, was also the head writer on Dana Carvey's short-lived but very interesting uh, sketch comedy show in the 90s. Then also you had Greg Daniels in that office. Greg Daniels, who brought The Office, the American version of The Office, uh, from Ricky Gervais's British version, uh, over to the United States. And then you also had, uh, Greg Daniels did uh, King of the Hill, the animated series. And then you also had in that office Bob Odenkirk, Mr. Show from HBO, you may remember, but of course, Saul Goodman from Better Call Saul and preceding that, of course, the amazing Breaking Bad. So all in one office and interesting conversations I had with Bob Odenkirk along the way and, and uh, so forth. One of the interesting things, uh, outside Jim Downey, who was the head writer at that time, who had been there since the second season of Saturday Night Live, see if you can keep up. I know I'm jumping all over the place. Two hours sleep. Did I mention two hours sleep? Conan had drawn, I don't know, I've been meaning, i hoping at some point to get a, uh, a little chance to speak with Conan because I wanted to ask him about this drawing that clearly he did. Clearly, you'll see what I mean in a moment. Matter of fact, I have the, uh, the drawing framed here. I actually photocopied it on two pages. It was on a legal page. But here, for your uh, convenience, are the three frames one at a time. He drew this. Look. Monday, I can whip any writer here. Tuesday, I, I, I have a lot to learn. Forgive me. Friday. Yeah, and that's Conan O'Brien. Now, uh, in addition uh, to those types of things, uh, because Tom Schiller became such a, a, a good guy towards me, even though he didn't have to, he really embodied that original spirit of the show. And uh, as, in, as uh, 
emblified, yeah, I make up my own words, why not? Two hours sleep. Emblified by the intern joke. I figure that's kind of in the spirit of the original five years of the show. So uh, he was the first to ask me to be an extra in one of his films. Now, he was well known for, for making films on the first five years. He did Java Junkie, and he did uh, Don't Look Back in Anger, and uh, with, uh, when Belushi visits the graves of all the other not ready for primetime players that had passed away. And, um, well, he was doing a, a five-parter called Broadway Story, and uh, the part uh, of Pops was uh, originally played by A. Whitney Brown. Let me see if I can show you. There's A. Whitney on the weekend update, right? But uh, here, uh, uh, here's my extra contract. Look what I got paid, $169, because uh, what had happened was they, they shot, <laughs> they shot, uh, you know, the first several sequences of it. And I'm going to show you the first of the, I think it's the third or fourth, I think I was in the fourth episode. And uh, so let me show you the first part of the fourth episode. This is Broadway Story. Okay, did I mention we're going out live? We're going to have to skip straight to part two. In part one, you see that Tristan Fives, as played by Dennis Miller, the evil Tristan Fives, wants to destroy his, his arch nemesis. Uh, John Lovitz, his character, who owns a theater, and uh, he, he aims to blow up the theater, and he has this infernal explosion machine of some sort, and he blows up Lovitz's theater, and... And everything is mayhem and chaos, and so hopefully part two will work. Here's part two of episode four of Broadway Story. Hopefully, fingers crossed. And toes, you can't see them. Okay, apparently that's not cooperating either, and I tried to make it a smaller file size so that it would. But in any case, Pops dies in the explosion, and they asked me to be the dead body. I guess A. Whitney Brown couldn't make it for such a trivial thing, but you know, they say there are no small parts in theater. I suppose the same is true for film. And uh, there, I'm like dead in the rubble, and uh, Mike Myers looked up to Pops, and so he's this little... He's this old little kid paper boy, and he's like, Pops, no! And he's at my, he's on his knees, like around, puts a blanket over my head or a jacket. Uh, I wish you would have seen it. Maybe I'll have to share it another time. Bummer. Bummer Dugan, as they say. But you know what? We've got so much to get to. Don't you despair. We're going to keep going. Oh, my goodness. There are some comments here. We're going to have to get to them as well. Uh, but you know what was great about uh, being an extra in that is it showed the talent department that, hey, Dave J here, he could be, he could be an extra after all. And uh, as such, I'd like to share the next part of our show, which is called Extra Dave J, or is it Dave J Extra? Extra Dave J. <laughs> Strike that, reverse it. Dave J Extra. So uh, what I was hired to do next was... Uh, I'd gone back to college for my senior year, and I was uh, asked if I could come in, or maybe I was coming in for a break. But I came in, let's see what the date of this uh, this contract was. It was the Handsome Man sketch written by Mike Myers, and Conan O'Brien appears in it, as a matter of fact. Here's the actual contract. I think it's October 21st, so I guess I came in especially for, now my internship is January through May, and look, another $169. Plus, $10 wardrobe fee. I learned how to work the system. Here's a very bre abbreviated uh, moment from the sketch, just for a little photo. There you go. 
In any case, uh, after doing the Handsome Man sketch, the following March I had already graduated, or had I? Wait a second, March 1990, I believe it was. So I guess maybe I was home for St. Patrick's Day? Red hair, don't let it deceive you. Jew. In any case, uh, maybe there's some Irish Jews, I don't know. What do I know? If there are, let me know in the comments or section below. Uh, I was cast in two sketches as an extra uh, on the Rob Lowe hosted show. Oh, and I remember because uh, uh, the, the musical guest was uh, that drunken band, what were they called, with uh, Kate O'Riordan and uh, uh, the guy with the messed up teeth. The Pogues, that's right, the Pogues were the musical guest. God, was that lead singer sloshed. I digress. So I was cast in the Irish drinking song sketch, which they had me prominently on camera. But then they said, no, 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 wait, we're going to have you prominently on camera in the other sketch we have you in, the Arsenio Beckman sketch. This was a Rob Lowe creation that he was wanted a mock, mock, you know, I love the word mock, Arsenio Hall, who was very big at the time. And so here's, here's a little bit of the Arsenio Beckman sketch. <laughs> I guess that's one of the perks of having been an intern. But in any case, uh, so there was that. And uh, and then, you know, I think that might have been my last extra role. <laughs> Although they gave me tickets to come see the show a few times. But wait, that's really just a little preamble. Well, everything up till now is just preamble. As a matter of fact, uh, we're going to get to the meat of the, uh, of the show now because it's time for the Tuesday Tale. <laughs> Well, I'd mentioned uh, that uh, my friend Tom Schiller, uh, he would he would just bring me with him to the to the table section, which I wasn't supposed to go in the after parties uh, after the show, and he would answer all my questions. And then the internship ended. And one time I came to visit him, and actually one of those times it was uh, there was a brand new cast. And his office was in the way back, right past where I'd mentioned Conan's and Greg Daniels and so forth, and Bob Odenkirk's office was. It was a little past that. It was in the way, way back. Had his own little section with a little kitchen in the, his area. It was kind of cool. And uh, so one time I went and hung out with him there uh, after I work. It was in the early 90s now. And, uh, and afterward, uh, we went out and he said, look, you stay here. I'm going to go into the talent office and I'm going to tell them they should hire you. And I was like, really? And I, I can't imagine he went in there and did that because it's my esteem. You know, I think figure he went in there and said, uh, listen, look, I told him I would come in here. Can you guys just cover me? Huh? No, but he probably did. He's a stand up guy and I want to believe he did. OK, so there. But while I'm waiting for him, there's this whole new cast. They don't know who anybody is. And it's Sherry O'Terry and Will Ferrell. And there's uh, who doing the weekend update was uh, was uh, Colin Quinn. And I hung out and talked with Colin Quinn for a bit. And Sherry O'Terry was nice. Everybody was nice because nobody knew who anybody was. Maybe I was an executive at NBC. No one knew. Well, in any case, that really didn't come to anything. Uh, except I somehow remember riding in a, a limo 
I went to see one of those shows, and I rode in a limo with Daryl Hammond and Will Ferrell. Very nice guys. Uh, in any case, here's the real meat and potatoes of the Tuesday tale. Tom Schiller in the early 2000s, I think it was around 2006, maybe 2005, he was being honored at Lincoln Center. They were showing his short films that he had done in the early days of Saturday Night Live, and Tom Schiller had actually made a feature film, I think it was for Paramount Pictures, called, called, no, not Don't Look Like an Anger. Why do I have such a, no, it's, we're going to fix it in post. How embarrassing. I hope Tom's not watching. I had to ask him the last time I spoke with him. Well, look, I'm afraid I just don't have time for all of the details. You'll forgive me. I'm embarrassed. Can you see the blush? In any case, Tom invited me down to Lincoln Center, and uh, I had come straight from a gig, so I had my guitar with me. And uh, what I didn't know is that uh, Tom had reserved, there were reserved seats for certain people. And I walked into uh, the theater, and, uh, and this is what it looked like. And when I walked into that room there from the back, facing forward, as I walked in, in the middle there, right in the middle, was Bill Murray. And as I walked in, for some strange reason, he said, he was looking down in front of him, he said, Dave J. Gerstein. And I'm like, I'm Dave J. Gerstein. Why is Bill Murray saying my name? Well, apparently there was a piece of tape on my seat saving my seat. So, uh, Bill Murray, I sat right behind him. In any case, Tom had instructed me that, look, just stay for the films, and then after the films, people are going to leave, and we're going to sign some books, but just stay. We're going to go to a bar afterwards, and you can come and hang out with us. Cool! All right! So, the films happened, and then uh, there was a, a panel, and there was a book signing. Here's the panel afterward, and they answered some questions and so forth. They answered some questions and so forth on that panel that I just showed you. I can't tell if you hear the audio in when I'm putting the pictures up. This could be a big concern. Uh, in any case, we're doing the best we can. Two hours sleep. Uh, here's the book signing. There's Bill Murray. There's Bill Murray and Tom Davis next to him. So here's the deal. Tom Davis was the other original Tom on the writing staff of the show. You know Tom Schiller now because I've told you all about him. But what about Tom Davis of the famous comedy team Franken and Davis? You know Senator Franken, but do you remember Tom Davis? Of course you do. Well, here's a little segment I'd like to call Franken, no, make that Gerstein and Davis. Franken and Davis? Ah. Not this time. Gerstein and Davis. Okay, so uh, here I am. I'm just waiting after the show, and I'm sitting there, and I'm waiting, and uh, people are filing out after the uh, the whole after the panel discussion and everything, and people leave, and I look to my left, and there's like four, five empty seats, and who's in the very next seat? There's a mos mosquito there. Damn mosquitoes! You know, I just have to dig digress a moment. We have a mosquito issue in this apartment. Now, I say it's because my wife opens the window uh, because it's cool outside. I say, let's turn on the air conditioning. On the other hand, they may be living in the air conditioning. I'm not sure. Do any of you have mosquito issues? Let me know in the comments or section below. I'm like, it's like Moby Dick. I'm like the Moby Dick, the Captain Ahab of the Moby Dick with me and mosquitoes. Trust me. Dicky Mo, Dicky Mo. That's a Tom and Jerry reference. All right, let's get back to the story. So I look over, and there's Tom Davis. Now, here's the thing I should tell you. When I was an intern 15 years before or so, whenever I'd walk past Tom Davis's office door, it always reeked of marijuana fumes coming out from underneath the door. You could smell it. Now, I was very much a novice in marijuana back in those days. It was very much my early days in the marijuana. Sorry, Mom and Dad. It, it, it was a candy marijuana cigarette. It wasn't a candy cigarette. Mom and Dad, it was a candy cigarette. Okay, you get the idea. So in any case, I see Tom. So I get up, and I move over, and I sit down next to Tom Davis. I say, listen, I don't know that you'd remember me. You probably don't remember me, but I, I'm Dave J, and I was an intern back in 1989. 
you were really nice. Actually, Tom Davis was really nice to me when I was an intern. He offered to read my sketches. He gave me his mailing address up in Cooperstown. He had a place. He said, mail me some sketches. I'll be happy to read them. I mailed him the sketches. He never got back to me. They must not have been that good. I don't know. Maybe Tom had a busy schedule. Whatever it was, it was nice of him to offer, though, wasn't it? Let me know if you think so in the comments or section below. We'll be getting to your comments very shortly, by the way. I just have to finish this this labyrinth of a story. Oh, I hope you've got you buckled in. So I say to Tom, you know, when I was an intern, every time I'd pass your office door, wafts, wafts of, of marijuana smoke would come out. And I would think to myself, God, wouldn't it be cool if Tom Davis would invite me in and offer a toke to me? <laughs> you know, so I told him and he goes, yeah, well, meet me out front in five minutes and I'll make your dreams come true. Oh my goodness, yes. So while they were doing the book signing, I meet Tom Davis out front. Now he had signed books, maybe it was after that. I don't know when exactly this happened because of the marijuana, you see. But I met him out front and sure enough, marijuana, joint cigarette, Tom Davis and yours truly, Dave J. I believe the statute of limitations covers me at this point. What year is it, 2020? Oh goodness, let's not remind anybody. So that was my uh, my Tom Davis story and uh, now, the postscript to this story is that a couple years, maybe three years later, uh, Tom had written a book, Tom Davis had written a book called 39 Years of Short-Term Memory Loss. So to, to refer to the previous story, indeed, yes, he was quite the toker indeed. So uh, here, here's the cover of his book. So he went to speak at the Tribeca 92nd Street Y. The main YMHA was at 92nd Street, but they had an extra branch downtown in Tribeca. This was the ticket stub. So, of course, I go down there. I want to show support. I love this guy. He's been so nice to me. And I, I rolled a, a joint and I wanted to offer it back to him. He didn't, he didn't partake. He didn't want to. I didn't know he was actually sick. Sadly, he passed away from cancer only a few years later. Uh, God rest his soul. Goodness gracious, all these greats are, are leaving us. Well, in any case, um, what I hadn't realized is that so, at some point, he got on my email list from my website. And uh, between, or probably because I had hung out with him in 2005, 2006, around that time, I started working on my Beatles one-man show, as you may know. And he must have gotten on my email list. And so, unbeknownst to me, 2009, I have him sign my book. And what does Tom Davis sign to yours truly? I couldn't have asked for a better signature. Hey, Dave. You're my favorite Beatle. Oh! Score! Hey, Dave, you're my favorite Beatle. Mm. Now, I couldn't find it because I've stored it away in a very special place. But just as an PPS, a post-postscript to that, Tom Schiller for my 40th birthday party, gave me an amazing gift. It was in this great little gift box, four separate keychains of like thick glass, each with a real beetle encased in each. And he wrote a similar note, not you're my favorite beetle, but maybe it was something like that. I mean, he hadn't seen what Tom Davis wrote. I don't think I shared either uh, with either, but in any case, when was I 40? I don't know, was that 11 years ago? So there you go, it was two years after the Tom Davis thing. And that concludes this portion of the story. Now, let's uh, figure out where the button is that I might take a look at, uh, at what it is that, you, let's see, what you wrote. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at the commenter section. <clears throat> Okay, let's see here. Hey, 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 we got over that with Sean Hanshaw. No audio on cam two. I really appreciate that. Let me ask you, what about camera three? Do we have audio? I haven't even shown you. Camera three. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you, can you hear me? Let me know. Okay. Let me know if you could hear me on uh, camera three. Let's get back to the comments. Okay, hey, hey. Oh, Herb Goodman is here. My cousin, 
with Tanya and Herb there in San Francisco on my mom's side of the family, the Eisner side, if you will. Because we're back with you on our New York cousin listening all the way across the country where Herb and Tanya, as I've just said, welcome Herb and Tanya. Hope you're still here at this point, uh, late, late in the show. Uh, <laughs> technical issues and all don't, don't matter because we just keep rolling. Beetle Mike, as I said before, says, hey, hey, Dave J. Beetle Mike here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big shout out. Happy birthday, Dad. That's for you, Dad. That's right. Sean Hanshaw, Triumph, the insult dog. You know, tr one of the best lines Triumph ever said long, long after uh, I was there was written by uh, an assistant, a guy who I think wrote for Conan O'Brien, a guy named Andrew Secunda, who... Uh, his sister is a talent agent. Andrew, a uh, talent in his own right, was on The Nothing Special, the sketch comedy show that I had also been on. He was a freshman when I was a senior. And he had uh, fed the Triumph of the Insult Dog this great line you may have seen when he's interviewing people online for the Star Wars Redux. And somebody there is dressed in a, like, what do they call that? The com, Comic-Con or costume con, whatever they call that. Leprechaun. I don't know what they call it. When they dress up like their favorite character. Comic-Con? You, you'll tell me in the commenter section below. The com, comic commenter section below. And he says something like, uh, does one of those uh, buttons on your vest uh, call your mom to pick you up? Something like that. That was an Andrew Secunda line. I'm very proud to say of my association with Andrew. By the way, he stopped speaking with me. I think it's because I never paid him back for the Chinese food we split. Okay, I'm sorry, Andrew. I said I'm sorry. I sent him a check years later for $11.33 with a fortune cookie, but I don't think he liked that. In any case, let's continue on with the comments in the commenter section below. Uh, no audio when you show pictures. Oh, yeah, that blows. Goodness, I'll have to... Thank you for pointing that out, Sean. We'll have to work on that. I'm so sorry. I'll have to dub that in after the fact, and we'll see if we'll make that work. Saw so all those sketches live. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, you know what? After I was in that Arsenio Beckman sketch, I went back to Ithaca College, where I was going undergrad there, and I was working at perhaps what was one of the best jobs I ever had at Juana's Cantina in Center Ithaca, the little strip mall downtown. And I, I was making Mexican food in this little stand, and uh, you got to eat everything you wanted, take food home, what have you. Great boss who had a great sense of humor. Jim Johnston was his name. Hope he's doing well. In any case, uh, people would come up to me and go, you, you, were you just on Saturday Night Live? They, they like recognized me from the Arsenio Beckman sketch. It was wild. I was like, wow, my 32 and 0.7 seconds of fame, because that's not 15 minutes. Let's face it. I was an extra throwing up a floppy dummy. I asked for more from, well, you know, I know you're busy. Okay, let's get back to the comments. Uh, no on three. No con. Oh, goodness gracious, I gotta fix these. You know, you wouldn't imagine uh, all the technical issues I was having. Those those pops, uh, the Schiller Vision sketch problems I was having. I had that problem on the Arsenio Beckman thing, and uh, even on the Schiller Vision thing, I thought I had fixed it, and yet no. Tons of of, of technical issues. So maybe Mercury is in retrograde. Beetle Mike also pointing out no camera three. Well, thank you, but you know what? It is a cool shot, isn't it? Yeah. I know you couldn't hear me, but maybe I was doing some mime or some moment shots. Well, what do you know? I don't know. In any case, cosplay is the word. Thanks very much. I think the reason I blocked it out is because it reminds me of Bill Cosby, and that could be a problem for the cosplayers, couldn't it? That, that brings a whole new meaning to the word cosplay. <laughs> If you know what I, yeah, we're not working blue here. But don't worry about it, because we've got a little bit more to do before we uh, conclude and bring the show in for a landing, which I think we're doing pretty good on time. I'm, I'm delightfully surprised to say, maybe because we lost the Schiller Vision portion. But it's time for that part you know all already about, if you've watched this show, called Tuesday Teaser. Tuesday Teaser. Tuesday Teaser. Tuesday Teaser? Tuesday teaser. Tuesday teaser. Well, this uh, Tuesday teaser is going to tease, uh, for one thing, the postscript. The thing I like to call the postscript too. I mentioned postscript earlier, but this is going to be a postscript because there's so much information about my internship at Saturday Night Live that there is one uh, fella or two that I've left out. And one of those people is this fella, Dennis Miller. 
You remember Dell. You, <laughs> you, why didn't that happen when the picture was on? You can't hear me when the... Can you hear? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Probably not. Okay, well, I try not to say anything important now when the picture's on because you pointed out the audio issues. He says, uh, did you meet... Yes, I did meet Don Pardo. As a matter of fact, I got Don Pardo to leave a voicemail on my answering machine at our apartment in Ithaca. Uh, sadly, I don't have that anymore. Oh, man, maybe I have it somewhere, but I don't know where if I do. Uh, yes, Don Pardo was a super nice guy, very old gentleman. Elderly, I think, is the correct term if you want to be polite about it. But he was a very nice guy. And he really talked like that. He really did. How are you, Don? Oh, I have a little uh, angina. Oh, what, did you have Chinese for lunch? Yes, I had sweet and sour tofu. Oh, <laughs> yes, he was a little bit like that. Yes, wow, you say indeed. He was, it, you know, I didn't uh, hang out with him. It's not like I said, hey, let's go hang out. Why don't we go down to CB's? You know, let's go to CBGB's. What do you say? Catch my friend's band. Uh, he was a nice, yeah, all these people were around. Victoria Jackson, Jan, Jan Hooks wouldn't have anything to do with me. Um, nor did Nora Dunn. John Lovitz avoided me. But the rest of the people, Dana Carvey I mentioned last week, very, very nice. Um, a lot of people. Next week I will also, in addition to Dennis Miller, I'll mention a little quick Ben Stiller story. He was on the show very briefly as well. Uh, the other thing I'm going to tease for next week is uh, a bunch of things about my favorite superhero. Now, I, over the summer, if you were with me, you uh, know that Spider-Man is my favorite superhero. But uh, I've got a bunch of extra things that I didn't share over the summer about Spider-Man. For example, do you even know who Spider-Man really is? Well, I don't want to say, but uh, <laughs> you can read between the, uh, you know. In any case, that and so much more. Well, let's see where we are, bringing it uh, down to the end. And I'd like to play for you the tune that I've been playing to close the show. Uh, are there any other comments? Were you there when Sarah Silverman was? No, but I'm glad you brought that up because after I graduated college, when I graduated, uh, I was doing a lot of sketch comedy and I'd done some stand up to that point and I had a big decision to make. I had started writing songs again and I said, I can either stick with the music or the comedy. I don't think I should split the two. If my my mentor and pal Damo Keys is watching he'll he'll attest to you can't just you've got to focus on one Dave you're you're trying to do too many things for too many people he says and he's and he's darned right and I'm struggling with it still but I've got some direction and we'll talk about that on a future show too in any case uh Sarah Silverman was an NYU student when I graduated Ithaca College in 1990. And so because my comedy friends who had graduated years before me were doing stand-up in the clubs downtown, and the music clubs were very closely intertwined with some of these comedy clubs, I would hang out with my comedy friends. And who was and this was right in the heart of NYU, Washington Square Park, and that whole area downtown, West 3rd Street. And one of the clubs was called the Boston Comedy Club. And Sarah Silverman was doing stand-up in her early days there. Louis C.K. was doing his stand-up before he got the real acclaim that he ended up getting for really digging deep inside of him for who he became as a really great stand-up comedian. Dave Attell used to host that comedy show. So we were all hanging out. The, sh the, the show would close down, and we'd all hang out and kind of drink and do other sorts of uh, substances. <clears throat> With maybe kids watching. And... Uh, and my parents are watching, you know. They already know this stuff. I've been uh, a little too honest. I've a little too overshared a bit. But, you know, that's in the spirit of, of who I am and what this thing is. Was uh, she blue then? Yes. Yes, she was the same person. I mean, she was a really nice person. You know, I mean, off stage, she was... So here's the thing uh, performers know. See, I amp up when I get on camera. But when I'm not on camera, I'm probably more like this. You know, I mean... From time to time, I'll get excited and I'll talk because that's sort of part of my nature. But let's face it, when I'm on this show, I amp it up. And that's what people do when they're on stage and that's what people do. Now, her act on stage, it may be a little different from when she, she's on stage on camera. But yes, she worked blue then. I don't think she's particularly amped up. But sometimes we'd go back to her apartment, which is right down the street on Mercer Street, 250 Mercer Street, if I'm not mistaken. And we'd go up, it was a real nice building, doorman building and everything. And uh, and we'd 
we don't do bong hits in her apartment. Again, sorry, mom and dad, but it is true. And uh, she's very nice. I, I thought she was a delightful person, really. And even Louis C.K., really mild-mannered. He didn't whip out his penis or anything. I don't know what they were talking about. Maybe he didn't want to whip it out in front of me. Maybe that's one of the good things about being a fellow redhead. I don't know. Obviously, a lot of redheads that figure into this uh, story. What with Conan aforementioned? Aforementioned, I didn't even get to the word of the day. Aforementioned, word of the day. Word of the day. Okay, well, we are going to bring things in for a landing. And as I was starting to tell you, I've been closing the show. Uh, thank you. I'm glad you thought it was awesome, uh, Sean. How are you doing? How are you doing? Are you are you back to work, Sean Hanshaw? Uh, you've been a very early supporter of this live stream, and I want to thank you and Terry and Beetle Mike and DMD. I don't know if they're here tonight. I hope they're well. I hope you're all well. Mom and Dad, of course, and uh, Barry the K. I know he's on with the Nothing Special folks on their Zoom call, probably, but sometimes he watches it after the fact. And if you are, you know I love you, Barry the K. We're old. We're like blood brothers, except without the pin and the blood and the thing and the band-aid. But you get the idea. And so I've been closing the show, as I've been trying to say, on my music and one of my songs that I like to play. And of course, you know, the genre, the word I've come up with for my own genre. You're very welcome, Sean. Thank you. I sincerely appreciate it. Uh, my type of music is Jablamo pop music. Here's the bumper. So we've got the old capo here. We're going to put it right here on the guitar like so. Because it is crazy. It is crazy in this country. I mean, it's beyond crazy now. No matter what side you're on. I mean, right? It just, you couldn't imagine. Enough said. Okay? But when it all comes down to it, let's hope we do remain one community. I sincerely want to thank you for your patience, your time, your effort, your your uh, 
attentiveness, for your participation in the commenter section below. And I hope you've enjoyed yourself as much as I have, even on two hours sleep, count them, one, two hours sleep, that I mentioned two hours... <clears throat> Oh, goodness gracious. You don't want that to happen. We've had enough technical issues. We'll try to correct them for next week. Please do join us next week, and I will try to respond to all your comments literally, literally, lit literally, and literally after tonight's broadcast. But take good care until next week, and thank you so much. Uh, where are we? Here we are. And here are... Oh, we don't have the closing credits tonight. Apparently, we... Uh, we overwrote them with some of the other footage. So take good care. I'm Dave J. Good night.